So now we are going in part part three. This is a summary of part three, but we go in details again. Intimacy with God. He said, I will ask the Father. He will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. And he's talking about the Holy Spirit, of course. And he's talking about the Spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit in us. And he's telling us also that he will not leave us often before because the world will not see him anymore. But would the world we see? The world, but you will see me. We will be able to see him and the world will see him in us. That is the th third part. He said, because I live, you also will live. You understand? So let's go back. We have ascended, we have accepted us, our identity. We went to that room that he prepared for us. From there, we receive our identity of heaven. Now, second step of intimacy, we descended with the work with great, uh, to do good work because we have received all of the benefits of that room where we were with him. We produce good works. But now, three, he's telling us that this is the way it will be. As we obey his command, as we love him, the world will not see him anymore. We will see him and they will see him through us. They will see him through us. He said, on that day, you will realize that I am in Father, you are in me, I am in you. Whoever has come has my command, keep them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my father. I too will love them and show myself to them. So I did this little picture that you see here. We have Brother Paul. We can put there uh, Sister Holy. We can put there uh, Sister um, um, any, any of us here. We can put any of us here, okay? So let's say it's Sister Holy. Sister Holy now, because she has accepted her place, the room that the Father has given to her, and she has, she was able to ascend in the spirit and accept that identity. Now, Sister Holy is able to descend in the spirit and manifest in good work. Okay? Third step now, because she do that, there is growth in her. So let's in holy. She lives in Christ, and Christ is also in God. So it gives you that picture that here in the at the bottom. You have holy, but in holy, we have Christ. In holy, we have God. So third step is reassuring the oneness in Christ. You and Christ become one. You become one mind. You become one in the Father, one in the Spirit. You become one with Christ. You become one with the Father. Because Christ is in the Father. You understand? You become one. Let's continue and we break it down more. Amen. So keeping the command of Christ. What keeps you in that is the alignment with the word. So there is an alignment that is taking place because we keep his command. We keep his love. We keep the word of God. You understand? The world is now not seeing our Lord, but he see him in us. Hallelujah. So when the world is looking at Sister Holy, he's seeing Jesus. You get me? He's seeing him. Intimacy produces oneness in the spirit.
spirit. That is the third level and is higher than everything. It's higher than the world. Because you can start in Christ and end up doing any kind of work. But you are doing the work. But this is the third level that is higher than the second level. Become one with him. They cannot distinguish between you and him. Just through you. As we keep the command, we are showing our love to Christ. In response, he will show himself to us. So, then Judah, not Judah Iscariot, that is verse 22. He said, Yes, please uh, bear with me. I'm going to the to a place where the connection is not disturbing. So just one more. Mr. Holy, can you read that passage? Can you say 22, 23? Hello? Oh, hi. It's it's no longer on the phone, but I can read it from the word. What's the what's the address in the word? Uh, 23 and 20, 24. John 14? Yes. 23, okay. Um, Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loved with me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which he hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. Amen. So let's go slowly. We see now that he say, uh, is Judah was asking, I'm going straight to verse 23. He say, my father will love them. We will come to them and make a home with them. This is the new level in, in, in part three, intimacy. We will come. Who are we? Who can answer that? Who are we? The Father, the Son, and yourself, and the Holy Spirit. Yes. Oh, no. We, we, it's all of us. It's, yes. it's the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Yes. So we will come to them and make a home. And he said, anyone who does not love me, you will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. So first, we learn obedience is the key for to this intimacy. Whenever he called you and how the obedience work, when you get to this level, whenever the Father call you for prayer, you go. You are not tired or anything. Because when it's like calling you, you know you have new instruction that you should receive. You go and commune and receive your infilling of the Holy Spirit. We become the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We become the habitation. So now, from there, let's learn he said, make a home with them. And here, I want to highlight, there's a difference between a house and a home. Who can give me the difference? There's a big difference between having a house and having a home. Who can tell me the difference? A house is a structure. And mm -hmm. you make it a home when there's an indwelling, when there's a presence. Okay, that is good. So Look at family. Something. Yes. 
who can add something? What you say is true, but who can add something? There's some word I'm looking for. A life. Holy. Life. Can you find um, me a co-host? I'm so sorry, because I want to add the slides. I don't think they're there. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let me see. Okay. What is what is to be what is a home? What is a house? Is it a home when you make it your own? Yes. Yes. He's talking about not something that is temporary, not something that is fleeting. Because sometimes we think intimacy with the Lord, you go and you you take more time and then you can get out and then you go and whenever you feel like you go and whenever you don't feel like you get out of there. He's telling you about something that we, we stay. When you have a home, welcome to a home. You can come to a home. It's a type of ownership. It's a type of permanency. It's not something that is temporal. When you go to an Airbnb, you cannot say, okay, I'm going to my home. It's not your home. You know that you are there for a while, for a time, and then you have to leave. It does not belong to you. But when you say home, there's an attachment. When you say home, there's a kind of property. It's something that belongs to you. There's a time of, it's like a familiarity with the person, familiarity with the, the, the location that you, you uh, of the, the, the place where you are staying is what is home. So he said, my father and I will make home. What is it giving you like impression before I go to the scripture, to, to what I, I, I put? What is giving you? When he said the father, the son, the spirit was sent. And it's the, the, the spirit who's there. But the father and the son will make home in me. Who can help me with that? The father, the son will make home with me. Anything and nothing is silly. You just say what you feel. The father, the son will make home in me. The fellowship that we have together? Yes. Fellowship with who? With the Father and the Son and you and the Holy Spirit. So Is try. That... Mm -hmm. So all of this time, you have gone first level. You have ascended to heaven. Okay. You went to them. You went crying out to them. You went pleading. You went to stay with them in the room they have prepared for you, where? In heaven, okay? You, second level, you have manifest good work by descending with the blessing you have received and influencing people around you with what you have inside you. Third level now, because of obedience, keeping his word, staying online with what he wants, continuing consistently, consistency in obedience, in following what he said. Now, the father and the son come as well and stay with you, inside you. So now I'm not seeing just get right with the Holy Spirit. I want you to receive this. I am seeing on earth God in his trinity inside Edra. I'm seeing the Father, I'm seeing the Son, I'm seeing the Holy Spirit in one person. That is the third level of intimacy. We will come to them and make our home with them. So I say we know the difference between having a house and having a home. A home is where you, you, you take residence. 
and you declare it is your own. The Father, the Son come inside you and now reside in you. They take comfort in you. They delight in you. They delight in you. So this is where you see a, the deeper relationship with Christ. When you are talking now, Deborah, when you are talking, you manifest sometimes like a father with love. You manifest sometimes like the son with grace. You manifest sometimes like the spirit. Because three of them are in you. Amen. That is the level of intimacy of what was given to us. And, and let's continue. He said, 25. Only if you can read 25 and 26 in your Bible. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Amen. Why the third level sometimes is a mystery for us? Because we don't know that. That is one. We don't know. We don't know at what level we are. Some of us is today, you have learned you have to ascend. Some of us have ascended, are producing good work, but they never went to the third level. Why? They need to learn how to function at the third level. And who is giving you to learn how to function at the third level is the Holy Spirit. The advocate the Holy Spirit, whom the Father has sent. So we have two advocates, if you look. We have Jesus as advocate, as a son, sitting at the right hand of the Father, arguing back whatever the devil is trying to accuse us with. And then we have this advocate, that is the Holy Spirit. And the role of this advocate is what? Is teaching us all things. He is the one who has to teach us the way of the Father, the way of the Son, the way of the Holy Spirit. He is the one who is teaching us and reminding us everything. Trust me, the Holy Spirit is the teacher of who you are in him. He's teaching you all things. And you will do what he's teaching you. I put here, Reverend Paulette, what did the Holy Spirit teach you? What did you learn from the Holy Spirit? What he's saying is what you do. He taught me everything. Vera, he will teach you everything. Holy, he will teach you everything. Papa Shamu, he will teach you everything. From the revelation of the word of God, or how even you have to manage your family. Holy Spirit teach everything. It's not a subject that Holy Spirit cannot teach. He knows everything. He knows the things of the kingdom. He knows the things on the earth. He knows the spiritual thing. He knows the one that are not spiritual. He knows everything and he can teach you everything. The Holy Spirit will teach you even things like mathematics. I remember I, I was working because sometimes I do some IT work and I was working in a project where I hire a designer, is a web, uh, not a website designer, but a digital designer. And every time he was charging me 300 an hour, every time he moved an arrow, I paid 300. Every time he put a dot where I see a dot coming, he charged me 300. I locked my room in. I went in the room. I pray. I said, Lord, you say in your word, you will teach us everything. I want to learn how to manage this software because I could download the software. It was Adobe Illustrator. I can download the software, but I didn't know where to start. I said, you will teach us all things. Father, I want to learn this thing. 
two days praying and looking at the software. The, lock, the software is looking at me, praying and looking at the software. Third day, I started moving the stuff. I knew how to design Adobe Illustrator. He downloaded that in my head. He's teaching. I didn't go to class. I didn't follow something on YouTube. I say, I want to learn. Teach me. Then he say, touch this button. I touch. Go left. I go left. This is the way you can change the color. I say, thank you, Father. I go after. He taught me Adobe Illustrator. He can teach you any type of software you want to learn, any type of complicated whatever you want to learn. He teach you the spiritual stuff. He teach you the natural stuff. He teach you everything. It's to patient and seek for that piece of student. He can teach you anything with the wisdom of God. All you need is obedience and listen when he's teaching. So in this third level of intimacy, you know already who you are. You have gained your identity by ascending. But the more you accept the teaching, the more your life is transformed also through the teaching of the Holy Spirit. The grace is multiplying through you and the spiritual children you receive. Why? Because now you know how it works. Before, you will cry all of your problems and say, God, help me. But now you know that there's a room that was prepared for you. So there's a room where I cannot go and enter. I cannot go in the room of holy. If God has prepared a room of holy in heaven, I cannot go in the room of holy and take what belongs to holy. No, God has prepared it with the name of holy at the door. Holy just need to ascend to her room and receive. Like Paulette, I will ascend to my room and receive. And I have to learn whatever was given to me in the heavenly and know how to manifest it on earth. This is when the grace is multiplying, when now I'm attentive to what God has given me. He will remind you of everything the Lord wants you to understand. He will bring back to, your, to you details. Sometimes I'm doing something, the Holy Spirit says, don't forget left, don't forget right, don't forget this, don't forget the amount, don't forget. He brings back details of what he wants you to do. Remind you the goal of every task. What is the goal on this one? What is the goal on that one? What is the goal? He reminds you, why are you doing this? Some people forget a lot. They want something so bad, God give to them. They are the very same to destroy what God has given them. A lot of people do that. A lot of people, I have a case. It's a very sad case. She, this girl was in the line praying for healing, but she received uh, HIV uh, through witchcraft. She, I don't know what happened to her. All of her symptoms were manifesting like witchcraft. Now, she came to the line of prayer. I was praying. Everybody was praying for marriage. She was praying for healing. The Lord told me, tell her that I'm giving her a husband. She was so surprised because she knew that in her condition, nobody will accept to marry her. On all of these girls asking for marriage, do you know that she was the first one to get married? She was so happy. She accepted. But as soon as she got married, instead of keeping her blessing, she was the first one to mistreat that man. She started looking at him, mistreating him all kind. She would call me and tell me that there are two at home. Why she feel like she's the one who has to cook every day? Why she feel like she's the one who has to clean the house or wash the dishes? I asked her, how many are you in that house? She said, we are only two. I said, so you cannot wash two dishes? And she was thinking she's joking, playing with it. Guess what? The enemy used that very, very rebellion of her to strike again. And that time she was gone. 
out of sudden, all of her symptoms of all of the disease she has came back and she was gone. She's no more. But I've seen so many people receiving blessing and destroying the blessing God has given them because of disobedience, because of rebellion, because of their heart. They remove their heart from God and they start looking for so many other things. And we have seen that in the Bible also. We have seen Solomon receiving all of the wisdom of the world. He could have it all. But he started neglecting, neglecting, and he started losing again. So sometimes the things that happen, we just need to check our obedience. The Holy Spirit will remind you the details. He will remind you the details. If you get comfortable, don't forget you have a life of prayer. It's not because you get comfortable. You don't pray anymore at 5 a.m. It's not because you, are not, you get comfortable. Now you have everything you wanted. You want husband. You want children. Now you have them. It's why you cannot read your Bible anymore. So we need to keep intimacy, grow with consistency. We need to keep that consistency. It's not because the, 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 the church, now we are crying for numbers and new beginning. But the Lord can turn it around. Give us 200, 300, 400 members. But it's not because I have 400 members now. I will not sit down anymore and ask God, what should I teach people? Give me your fresh word. When you get comfortable, you forget. This is what he gave even in Deuteronomy 8. He said, do not forget the law who has blessed you. Do not. We forget when we, we get to a certain place, we forget the intimacy, the one who brought us to that place. I remember reading the, the, the story of a pastor. That pastor has such a good time with the Holy Spirit that every time he was praying in tongues, his, the room where he's praying will illuminate so much. The presence will be so much. It will fill that room where he is. It will fill the room. When you come, you will think that it's the light that he put on, but actually it's not the light. The light was coming from the presence of God. And guess what? His church grew. It grew so much that it became more and more administrative stuff he will do. He will have no more time in the presence of God. Now everything is done automatically. Let's do a campaign. Let's do a, a revival time. Let's do this. Let's do that. And one day, he passed running to go to the, to the place. And what happened is he saw the light in the room. And when he saw the light, he said, what is happening? Who is that room? And when he entered, the room was empty. But he heard the Holy Spirit saying, hello, stranger. The Holy Spirit. Hello, stranger. That means it's such a long time. It's such a long, long time that he has not been in prayer. And the Holy Spirit is calling him stranger. A lot of people do that. That presence that we are talking about comes from consistency. Stay in the presence. Stay in the will of God. Stay in obedience, in connection, kononia, intercourse. Be in the presence of God. That intimacy is that third level. Now let's go to the next. He said, let's see. Oh, thank you for putting back the scripture. The... Okay, I don't see the... Okay, let's read the rest. Holy, do you have your Bible? I do. Okay, can you read the rest of the scripture? Um, verse 27 to, the, um, to 31? Yes. 
peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye loved me, ye would rejoice, because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it come to pass, that when it is come to pass, ye might believe. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. But that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise, let us go hence. Amen. Amen. So this last part of intimacy is sealed by the peace of God, the shalom. He said, I give you my shalom. I give you my shalom. Why he gave us the shalom is written in verse 30. He said, for the prince of this world is coming. He has no hold over me, but he comes so that the world may learn that I love the father and do exactly what my father has commanded me. Why we receive the shalom? Because the prince of this world is coming. He's coming with tribulation. He's coming with persecution. He's coming with trials. He's coming with all kinds of deception. That is why we receive the peace of God. Greater intimacy with, with God will provoke persecution by the enemy. The difference here is you know now who you are because you have the first step of intimacy. You took your identity from heaven. Second step, you are producing good work. Third step, because you know who you are and God has given you shalom, you will overcome the enemy. That is the assurance. You have the shalom. You don't have to be afraid of Satan anymore because you have the shalom of God. What is this shalom? Completely, complete, complete, how you say that? Completeness. What is this shalom? Wholeness. What is this shalom? Health. And those are the things you claim and they are produced as you claim them. What is this shalom? You have health. What is this shalom? You have peace, welfare, safety. You have soundness, tranquility, prosperity, perfectness. You have fullness. You have rest, harmony, the absence of agitation or discord. That is called the shalom. He said, because you have kept my command and you love me. He said, peace I live with you. That is the third level of intimacy. Third level of intimacy is the peace you receive from God. That no matter what tribulation, the law is with you. He has overcome Satan. And you will pass that one too. Shalom is revealed as the reconciliation of all things to God through the work of Christ. All you need to do in this position is to believe. All you need to do is to believe. You believe that. I agree. This one is happening to me. I agree, this tribulation is happening to me. I agree, but now I know I have the shalom because I am in the presence of the Most High. I live with him. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are in me. I believe that and I'm standing with that. No matter what the enemy is throwing my way, I believe this, I have the shalom of God. There's nothing the devil fear like a child of God will know who he is. And this is not bragging. This is not self-motivational talk. 
I'm talking to you very quietly. The only thing the devil fear is you knowing who you are. If you speak in tongues in fear, he knows. He knows. But when you know who you are, you are not afraid of anything he can throw your way because you know that you have the shalom of God. You just need to open your mouth and things start being arranged around you. Things will start being aligned around you. Even in sin, you can talk to the demon and they run away. They leave you alone. You know who you are. Shalom is revealed as the reconciliation of all things to God through the work of Christ. You are one and there's nothing that can change that. This is why he say there's nothing that can separate you from the love of God. It was from this. When you reach the third level, you will see that even demon cannot separate you from the work of God, from the love of God. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. You know who you are. You don't belong to this earth. So things, material things come and go. You don't care. You know they come. When the Lord wants to give you, look at Job. When the Lord wants to give me, he embarrassed me with wealth. The devil took away. Then he came, the Lord came back and doubled what he has, was stolen to me. That is the case of Job. You are not embarrassed. When things look like lost, left, right, and everything, you start just laughing because you know that the same God who gave you before, he can double, triple, fourth time what he has given to you. So you stay with the shalom of God that I know for sure. God has not gave me, bring me on this earth to be a shame. No, there's nobody who carry shame and say I'm from God. It's not part of a vocabulary in heaven. So I start asking anything that was taken for me to come back. And in that shalom is where you decree. In that shalom is where you prophesy. In that shalom is where things get turned because the Father turn around, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit are in you. And you know, you know, you don't belong to the devil. That is intimacy with God. Psalm 4, 8, C. But uh, those who trust in the Lord have inner security. Therefore, they can sleep well. They can sleep well. It's another way to say they can rest. They can rest on the Lord. So third part is making home with men, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The first time I have the revelation of that, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in me, the Lord was teaching me who he was, and he took me from revelation from John, the, John to Genesis. And he told me that every time the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit are aligned somewhere is a new beginning because they can create. Remember when the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit were together is when they create the earth. When the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit were together is when they create men. Let us make men at the image, our odd image was the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So he told me, he told me, Every time you will see the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in one place, creation. So you can start again. You can decree a new thing. So if you are here and hearing my voice, whatever the situation you are in, if you know you have the Father, you know you have the Son, 
and you know you have the Holy Spirit, it's only your mouth that needs to be open to declare and establish what you want to see. That is third level of intimacy, becoming one with him. Hallelujah. I want to stop here and see if there's any question before we pray. Please open up. Um, Paula, I had a, um, a question about, I missed the very first teaching about okay. ascending into the room. Mm -hmm. And that's, and that's through prayer, through praise and worship, getting into his presence, um, in, in the room that he, he, he prepared for us. Yes. So, uh, you want me to talk a little bit about that? It, just, just for a minute. I don't want to take up too much time. Sure. Sure. But so the first was ascending. You know the scripture in uh, uh, John 14, in the beginning, he said, I have prepared a room. Can you read uh, John 14, the beginning, first and two verse? Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, mm -hmm. believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare Amen. A yes, it's, it's that one. It's not in this slide. Don't don't change slide. It's fine. So what I received like revelation yesterday, he said many of us think that the room he has prepared is when we die. So when we die, okay, we have a castle waiting at us. We have this a mansion. We have we always joke about it. But he told me, no, it's not that. He said the room that is prepared for you, this is even. As soon as you know you are safe, he said, there's a room for you. That room is your identity in heaven. So in order to receive that identity, you have to ascend. You have to ascend to that room because that room has your name. And I have like a, a little design showing. So you are on earth holy, but in heaven, there's a room with the name holy on it. That room is close to the father. And in that room is where you receive secret instruction and who you are and giving you everything about your identity. So you need to ascend in worship. You need to ascend in prayer. But also in that verse, not far, you will see at the bottom saying, Jesus say, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. In order to ascend, you have to align those three. The way, his way has to become your way. His way has to become your way in order to be in that room. His uh, truth has to become your truth. You cannot have your own way of functioning. And on Sunday, you come to church, you have another way of functioning. It doesn't work that way. And the third, your life has to be marked by his life. That means, I am your life. He changed everything and he become your life. By those you are sent. When you are sent now, he gives you instruction. You receive like that passport saying, now you are citizen of heaven. Now these are for you. It was created by the son for you, close to the father. This is where you went. You go to Ephesians 2, 6, who say, I am sitting in heavenly places above all principality, powers, and everything. It's from that ascend, uh, you ascending that you receive that sitting in the heavenly places. It's from that also that you have Matthew 6, 6, that say, when you want to pray, go into your room. What is that room? Is that room in the heavenlies? Go into your room, close the door, go into your room. Whatever you do in the secret, I will reward you openly. Whatever happened in that room in the heavenlies is what he will reward openly. 
how is it rewarding you openly now? You come down. That is the second part of intimacy. He will reward you with greater works, greater works. And he's saying in that second part that the work I do, you will do even greater. Because in that room, you receive everything that show your identity to come and manifest on earth. This is where now you descend because you have holy on earth and you have holy in heaven. When holy on in heaven know who she is, now the holy on earth will manifest who holy is in heaven through good works. And at the end of the session, second session, we have that verse in Matthew, I think it was 5, 6, that say that, let your light shine so, let your light so shine that they may see your good works. So now that Holy has received her identity in heaven, she descends. When she descends, she manifests the light of God. She manifests the presence that she has received. She manifests who she is that was produced in heaven. She manifests through good work. That is where your light starts shining. That is where everywhere you step, they know Christ is there true holy you don't need to talk too much people will know you are there people will know the anointing of god will announce who you are because the light is shining you took it from heaven it's not something someone mani um, manipulate it's not that you came and you pour a bottle of oil complete on your head no we cannot uh, we cannot manufacture something that is heaven heavenly made it's from that room you receive it. So now you are there producing good work everywhere you go, producing good work. Third step is as you continue in obedience and following the word of God, keeping his word, keeping the love you have for his thing, the father in heaven, the son in heaven, live in you. They move. They take residence. Now they move inside you. You have the Holy Spirit already that was sent, but now you have the Father, you have the Son. Third level of intimacy. They are inside. And they are inside. They seal you with peace in such a way that when Never you are encountering the enemy of your destiny, the enemy of your soul. You have peace because you know who you are. You know what you are producing. You know what is the promise of God. All you need to do is open your mouth. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Amen. Thank understand. Thank you. Is there another question? Amen. Yes, I have a question. Mm. Yes, Mama. Just that last part that you just said that the three of them move in you. So mm -hmm. I thought, I was thinking that uh, they were representing by the Holy Spirit when we are on earth. I yes. don't know how. Yes. Uh... Is why is the third level? The first level is you go and you get your identity. It's your passport. Okay. Second level, you descend with your passport. I compare it with the American passport. When you become citizen, you don't wait 10 hours now on the line just to justify why you are Nigerian or why you are Cameroonian in Jesus' name. So, now you come to the level you manifest. Third, now, because of consistency in the word, because of your obedience to the word, because of you yielding in the word, what happened? The Lord himself and his father come and live. That means your authority become now a manifestation of God on the earth. Okay. 
because as shown in the design before, you have two manifestations of Pauline. You have Pauline in heaven. That is the first step of intimacy. And you have Pauline on earth, manifesting through good work. Second step. The third step is the Father is so pleased with you. He delights in you. He delights in your presence. He delights in your action that him and the Son say, come and let's stay now inside Pauline. It will not happen if the first intimacy level is not taken care of. Or the second. And the obedience of the third is the one bringing you to the next level. The consistency. Because people, a lot of people who start good don't finish what they have started. They start with good works and then they start doing own thing. They don't follow instruction of the Holy Spirit anymore and everything. It becomes something else. But because you have obeyed and you stay, you are consistent in the presence of God, consistent of obedience, consistent in listening to instruction. Him and the Father say, Father say, let move. Let come inside and let's stay. Your authority increase is not only the Holy Spirit. You become the authority of God on earth. Is the third level. And that comes with peace because you know who you are. Jesus was not never afraid of dying. Never. Because he knew who he was. He knew that he came for that. Is that level that Jesus has. When he entered a place of worship and some people who have demons, that even the priest or whatever could not detect. The, 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 the demon will cry and say, hey, who's this one coming close to us? Why you came before your time? Jesus did not have to go and get them. They themselves cry like, why you came here? The presence is too much. The presence of God is too much. They cannot enjoy that presence. They want to leave. That is that third level of intimacy. Where you have the fullness of the tree. Amen. 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 If there's no more question, let's pray. And I hope this teaching will provoke you. I really hope. Because me, myself, I was surprised. I didn't know all of this. And all of this is John 14. So. I hope this teaching will provoke you in such a way that you will understand that all the Father need is, like he said to John, come up here. That means ascend. Come up here. And I will show you the future. That is Revelation 4.1. Come up here. There's a place where the Lord is waiting at you. He's waiting at you to ascend and to know who you are. To come to that place where you and him, you become one. Hallelujah. So let's okay. open our mic and start asking. I don't know which level of intimacy you are. I want you just to receive this teaching like I receive it like a blessing. Father, thank you for letting me know that I need to seek your face only. I need to seek your grace only. It's not a man-made glory. It's a heavenly divine glory. It's with you. I have the answer to everything. I'm praying. Open your mic and start praying. Oh, Thank you. Rabba oh, Rabba <laughs> 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 
Father, we thank you for this teaching. We thank you for this revelation of who we are in you. Father, we thank you, Lord. Father, thank you, 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 thank Rebecca, I want all of you to say, I'm looking for that room that the Father has been yeah, prepared for me. I know I have a room. I know my heart is longing for that room. Ha 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 ha. Thank you, Father, for that room that you have given me. In the heavens. Thank you, thank you for that position that you have given me. Thank you for your shalom. Thank you for your shalom in this time of trying. Try, try. Thank you for your shalom. Thank you for your shalom. I know this one will pass also. I know this one will pass also. I know this one will pass also. I know, Father, this one will pass also. I know, Father, this one Thank you for your presence, Father. 
Father, thank you for coming and making me your application. Father, for your faithfulness, thank you for your grace, thank you for the good words that you have blessed even before me. Come and come, you have blessed already these good words that you have prepared. You have prepared my room in heaven, you have prepared my good work in earth. Thank you for the good work that I'm manifesting, that I will manifest, that I will manifest. Thank you for all of the plan, all of the plan that I will manifest. The orphan house, the orphan prayer room, I will manifest. The one nation, pray your name, I will manifest.
Be blessed, be blessed, be blessed. Go and multiply good works. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Bye bye. God bless you. Thank you. All right. Let's go. Let's hit the road. I'm going to start working for us.